Today we're going to talk about encaustic painting for wax sculpture. There's a few things you're going to need right off the bat. Uh, those include gamblin oil paint or other oil based paint, a palette knife and a paintbrush to apply that paint. You're also going to need some gamblin cold wax medium to mix in with your pigments and some gamblin gamsol or other mineral spirits. You're also going to need a lot of paper towels, a jar to put your gamsol in, and some form of palette. Here I've used a plastic bag because I'm super poor. You're also going to need a torch, a striker, and a respirator in some cases. One last optional thing that you can uh, use for doing this is the angsty apron. You're going to start by setting up your paint, uh, and I've sped this up here because it is kind of time consuming. So you're going to take your paints and put them on your palette separately, um, and this will help you keep them away from the paint that you're actually mixing and give you a, a good starting point. Now you're going to take your palette knife and uh, mix these paints together, making sure to clean your palette knife with the tissue paper uh, in between changing color. So here comes what makes this encaustic, the Gamblin Cold Wax Medium. You're going to mix this in with your paint and there's really no set amount that you mix in. Uh, putting more is going to make your paint thicker, putting less is a little thinner, and adding Gamsol will also make it thinner depending on what you want. So now you're going to apply it to your wax sculpture. The whole reason we're doing this encaustic method of painting is because it is a, a wax or an oil based um, kind of sculpture and therefore this is going to bind to it uh, unlike an acrylic paint will. Um, so again, the main thing to make sure you're doing is mixing the paint with your palette knife, cleaning your palette knife um, with tissue paper or some other paper material, um, and the same with your paintbrush. You're going to want to take your paintbrush and put it in that jar of Gamsol uh, and then clean it with the tissue paper regularly so you're not mixing colors. Here it's not so much of a big deal because we're laying down a dark coat um, to kind of put underneath of the colors that will go on later. And uh, I'm not going to finish this entire sculpture painting wise, I'm just going to get down this base coat. So now I know what you're thinking, why is he painting this sculpture? It's not even finished. You've got the mold lines on there, there's specks of stuff all over the place. It's, it's just crummy all over the place. Um, the reason I'm painting this is one, the paint will actually cover up some of the uh, imperfections as it is thicker. And two, we can still edit the wax sculpture. What we're gonna need to do is make sure the room is well ventilated. We're also gonna need to put on that respirator because these paints are toxic and we're gonna start burning them. So to edit your sculpture, you're going to want to turn on your torch. Then you're going to light that with your striker. And you're going to want one central blue flame as opposed to two separate flames that you'll see. This is more intense heat. You're going to take your tissue paper and hold this beneath wherever you're torching your sculpture to catch excess wax that drips down. Uh, this will keep it cleaner and you won't have to do as much work later on. Now, if you work fast enough, you can actually clean up some of the drips that have been made and you can kind of smudge these into the sculpture to make it clean. So here you can see that both the paint and the wax have melted off of the sculpture. So there you have it, encaustic painting plus a little bit of wax editing thrown in. One final note is that because this is an oil-based paint and it is so thick, it may leave brush marks on your sculpture. You can use a rag to clean these up. Uh, your hands are going to get a little bit dirty, but you can give it sort of a textured tone. And that's something that's nice about the acoustic medium is you can make it have these sort of textures because of how thick it is. Um, a lot of people actually go for a thicker encaustic material comprised of beeswax and downmar crystals. However, this has to be heated. It's a long drawn out process and it's much more difficult than using this cold uh, wax resin. So there you have it. We've got our encaustic base paint all over that sculpture. Uh, ready to go. You can keep on painting it different coats, different colors, wait for it to dry and dry brush it, whatever you want to do. It's ready to go.